Good morning and welcome back to Elmas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. Well, hope all of you had a very good uh, long weekend because there are some data points to catch up. On Friday, we had the very important PCE price index data, which is an inflation measure Fed closely looks at, as well as the US GDP data. This week, we have the all important Fed's interest rate decision. So understanding it, understanding the implications of data is important. Good morning, JK. Talk to us about these themes uh, and what will drive the markets ahead of the FOMC. Hey, good morning, uh, Swaraj. Yes, uh, as we were away, there was a lot of things uh, from the economy, US economy, as well as the Eurozone economy. Uh, US economy grew faster than expected at 3.3% uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, that's as per the advanced estimate. And this is actually beating, you know, one more series of uh, beating data uh, compared to what markets had been expecting. If you remember in the beginning of 2023, people were expecting US to shift into a recession, but they continue to grow and strong consumption has been again a big factor. Uh, also, the data showed that GDP price index was at 1.5% in the fourth quarter, down from 3.3%. So we, the price pressures are also reducing. Uh, overall, it's a Goldilocks scenario in uh, the US uh, that, you know, where which cannot be ignored, actually. And uh, PCE price index, again, they showed month-on-month -month increase of only 0.17%. And that's exactly what is needed to consistently achieve inflation back below or at 2% year-on-year uh, -year over a period of time. So both the data were good for the US economy. Uh, on the other side, we had ECB uh, policy meeting that left rates unchanged and Lagarde went to the extent of saying that it is too early to consider uh, rate cuts. But, uh, you know, markets latched on to a Reuters report citing some sources that, you know, European Central Bank policymakers are open to a change in their rhetoric at the next meeting and paving way for an interest rate cut, uh, possibly in June. And if the upcoming data confirms inflation has, uh, you know, has vanquished, then possibly that will be supporting their move on the lower side of the interest rate. So that that actually led to some selling in the euro, so uh, euro currency as well as the eurozone bond yields uh, coming up. So what what all this meant for the markets? Not really much actually, because if you look at the bond market, uh, they had been in a narrow, much narrower range in the last week. Um, in fact, surprisingly, after the stronger uh, GDP number and the softer PC number, which are actually contradicting uh, each other for as far as the bond yields are concerned, there's not been net net much movement in the uh, bond yields. Uh, as far as the stocks are concerned, again, uh, S&P 500, of course, made the fifth consecutive new high, but uh, uh, you know, there is no major follow through on the buying side for either of the indices, even the global markets have after the initial euphoria after China cut RR rate that has also been somewhat subdued. So uh, I, I think the market is still waiting for some other major announcements uh, from China. If you look at the Chinese currency, it's back, back at level which was uh, seen before uh, China moved on their uh, policy decision. It's uh, trading, trading now very close to 7.20 uh, once again. So on the overall dollar, of course, the growth picture in the US and the cautious stance taken by the Fed remains supportive uh, for the dollar. Uh, at the same time, uh, the relative growth picture of US is, of course, uh, uh, much, much stronger. Even if you consider their growth rate pre-pandemic as well as the post-pandemic, US has been growing at much uh, better rate than all the other major economies. Eurozone, in fact, as we know, is struggling still uh, closer to recessional level. So uh, China is well known uh, to be struggling. So that, that actually keeps supporting the dollar, at least uh, for now. Uh, the rate cuts are well priced in, uh, even if Fed does incline towards a move in March, that is not going to be a shocker or a big surprise for the market. Therefore, even a, a knee-jerk reaction to that will be followed by a recovery in the dollar because uh, rate cuts are all priced in. And on the other side, if they do disappoint uh, by you know adopting a cautious stand, uh, because growth picture is good, and inflation is still not reaching their targeted level. <clears throat> and one more thing to look at is that uh, the consumption has been still on the stronger side. Uh, uh, financial conditions are easier. All this will mean that in demand side, inflation will not abate very soon. So there is all reason to think that Fed will not move before May 
and uh, you know such an indication will actually be the trigger for dollar short covering which can take the dollar index to about 10450 uh, euro to below 1.08 and in fact euro has been trading a bit soft post last week's uh, events uh, on the rupee of course we have uh, uh, had no surprise or you know any excitement uh, uh, in the last uh, few days of uh, trading trading in a very narrow band but uh, looking forward to this week there are some uh, events that likely to broaden the range fed statement as well as powell's news conference on wednesday and then behavior of indian equities which look technically headed for more correction and whether we see larger outflows outflows from fis have been very large to the extent of 3 billion uh, in this month although offset uh, to a great extent by the bond related inflows uh, so that's something that we look forward to and finally the union budget on 1st february with a focus on fiscal deficit uh, current as well as the forecast uh, and the boost to consumption and investment that is looked forward to uh, uh, no major announcement will be uh, you know in the budget but uh, uh, definitely there are some things uh, you know uh, which can uh, come out uh, uh, in the in the form of you know basic uh, uh, support to the economy until the new government takes over so these are uh, things that will probably drive the usd inr uh, exchange rate now uh, finally before ending let's also uh, not ignore the fact that oil has been jumping it's now uh, well about 10% higher from the lows that was seen in the last month uh, this is after you know separate attacks in the Middle East uh, that, you know, uh, has erupted. Uh, the three U.S. troops were killed in an attack uh, tied to Iran-backed uh, groups. And uh, uh, so, again, uh, these confrontations are ongoing and uh, we, we, we probably will have some more retaliation from the Western side also. Keep the market on the edge. So, again, something not very supportive for the uh, risk uh, factor. Uh, markets likely to be in a range uh, before the Fed decision. And let's also for, not forget the fact that uh, even after the Fed decision, we have non-farm payroll data on Friday, ADP job numbers and other employment indicators. These are some things that will keep the market extremely engaged and a clear direction can then emerge only in the month of February as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. And just quickly summarizing uh, the theme, of course, was U.S. economy growing faster than expected uh, at 3.3% in the fourth quarter. It beat expectations and even GDP price index was at 1.5%. Uh, so the price pressures are definitely moderating. PC index uh, grew slowly month on month, indicating a positive approach towards getting inflation under control. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, when we talk about the other Asian currencies, Chinese currency continues to depreciate. Uh, despite the measures taken by the Chinese government, including a cut in their reserve ratio requirements. And for rupee, we continue to trade in narrow ranges. Uh, some things that can widen this range would be Fed statement, uh, what Powell has to say, uh, be aware of Indian equities and the interim budget. Uh, that's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Uh, tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial.